Hey everybody, it's me, Asinelos, and welcome back to another video. Welcome back to Reddit, welcome to r slash pro revenge. And it feels like I haven't been on this subreddit for absolutely forever, but these stories are probably some of the best that you'll find on Reddit. And today's video is all about getting revenge at just evil and toxic parents, so let's not waste another moment and get straight into the video. Ended mother-in-law's career after she ruined our lives. I've posted a bit about my fiancé's adoptive mother, Susan, in the last couple of weeks. But for anyone unfamiliar with Susan, she was my lecturer when I was at university. Susan hated that I was dating her adopted son, biological nephew, since she found out about us. When we first told her we were dating, she tried to kill me via allergy. Another story for another day. And after she found out I was pregnant, she stalked us, impersonated me, and broke into our flat. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. She made our lives hell, to the extent where we no longer felt safe in our own home, and my fiancé and I had to move across the country to escape her. We've been living in our new place for a little under a week. The baby is due in a couple of months, and everything is mostly ready. We've deactivated our social media, created new emails, and changed our numbers. Only a few friends and relatives from the town she lives in, which we left, have our new numbers. We had to leave our entire lives and everyone we knew and loved behind. All while I was seven months pregnant because we couldn't trust her around our baby. On Monday, an email was sent from the Dean to Susan's graduating students, saying Susan was being considered for a promotion, from lecturer to head of department, and they wanted to hear from her students first. The aim of this was to receive glowing recommendations to give to the board. This was not the result. As I had changed my email, I hadn't seen this. One of my friends who had my new number and was on the course with me did see the email, and on Tuesday, he gave my new number to the dean, saying that he would only give the number in person, on paper, and only if she agreed to ring me when she was alone and throw out the paper and erase it from the logs after. If she was calling from a university phone, then the phone number would go to the call logs that were accessible by all members of staff. But he assured her that this was something she'd want to hear before promoting Susan. So I got this call from the Dean on Tuesday. She told me what was going on. My friend hadn't had time to get in touch with me before she rang, and she asked me why my friend thought I should speak to her. I told her everything. I started two years ago when I met Susan's son, the man who would become my fiance and the father of my child. I told her about Susan poisoning me via allergy after finding out about me and her son and the EpiPen incident. I told her about the outside of class harassment I received post-pregnancy announcement, impersonating me, crashing GP appointments and breaking in. I told her about the in-class harassment, telling me to break up with my fiance, stopping lectures until I left, throwing out my food and drink, trying to reschedule exams and more. I told her about the last time I saw Susan in person when she tried to hit me while I was seven months pregnant with her grandchild. I told her about having to move away. I was careful not to give a location or distance and filing a restraining order to escape Susan. I thought the uni were made aware of the restraining order, but apparently not. Fiance then arrived home from work and when I told him what was happening, he was all too eager to chime in with the stuff I forgot. Copying keys, punching the landlord, cancelling orders, going through our things. He also told the Dean about the abuse he got from her growing up. We also gave the Dean the names of people willing to support our story, as well as some dates, times, and locations of on-campus incidents. I'd made a note of a few of them, so she could pull CCTV from the campus security recordings. Fiancé also told her the story of one of his cousins, Susan's biological kid, who got close with a guy on Susan's course. But the guy was told to break up with her by Susan with a thinly veiled threat against his academic career. We also told the Dean about Susan telling me to break up with my fiancé and vice versa so she could better maintain professionalism. The Dean was horrified. She had me and my fiancé record a video where we said everything all over again, from the top. We made sure the video had nothing to identify location and we were assured Susan would never see it. We also sent her all the proof we had alongside it. 
This was all forwarded to the board on Wednesday and Thursday. She asked my friend for the number again and just called me for the second time, telling me that the board unanimously agreed this was grounds for Susan's dismissal. They said that while the outside of uni events weren't really their business, they go towards her character and the fact that as department head, she would represent the department whether she was at the clock or not. They said even without this, the events that happened inside of uni alone, stopping lectures, telling me to dump my fiancé, telling that other guy to leave her daughter alone, throwing out my stuff, seeking special treatment on grounds of nepotism, they were all abuses of power and enough to justify Susan's dismissal. They asked me why I hadn't filed charges and I said all I'd gain from filing charges is Susan staying away from me and the restraining order and moving away has the same effect. Plus, as it's exam season, my tutor work is really taking off and I don't have the time to go through a whole court case. And I'll have even less time when the baby arrives. The baby is due in about eight weeks and Susan has already caused me enough stress. Tomorrow, in the meeting where Susan is fully expecting to be told she got her promotion, the dean is now going to give her a week to hand in her resignation. If she refuses, she'll be fired. If she doesn't hand in her resignation, she'll be fired. She will not be getting a reference. The only reason she's being given the option to resign is that she has worked at this uni for nearly a decade. But if she so much as raises her voice in the meeting tomorrow, she will be fired. Security will be present for the meeting in case she tries anything. Meanwhile, the friends we left behind aren't hesitating to tell anyone who will listen all about what Susan did during the course of mine and my fiancé's relationship. There's not a single soul left in that town who trusts her or will take her side if she tries to fight back. Not even her husband, who told us that now all their kids are over 18, he will be initiating divorce proceedings. I don't even feel a little bit bad. I know there's a chance I went too far, but I didn't lie or embellish anything. I just gave the dean the facts as they are. Everything is 100% true, and while it was me who told the dean, I see this as Susan's actions having consequences. Susan has more than enough money to pay for herself for the foreseeable future. She owns her home, her husband's name is not on the deed and she bought it before they got married. So she'll get the house in the divorce as it's not technically a shared asset or one acquired during their marriage. She'll have a roof over her head and money in her bank account. And if she wanted, she could get another job, just probably not one as a lecturer. And there's a long edit section where OP answers some of the most commonly asked questions. And I think the most interesting of them is what's the EpiPen slash poisoning accident? I'm severely allergic to peppercorn, as in salt and pepper. And shortly after Susan found out we were dating and asked us to break up, she then invited us to dinner to apologize. I offered to cook as I had my pepper allergy to work around and she insisted on cooking. Fiance also reminded her of the pepper allergy, as did her husband. She cooked pepper crusted turkey. Susan insisted it was a palate issue and I needed to stop being fussy. I didn't eat it, but due to my proximity to a giant lump of cracked and cooked pepper, combined with the severity of my allergy, I was sat at the table with the turkey right in front of me. I wound up inhaling enough that I began to violently cough and felt lightheaded. Fiance went to get me water while I went for my EpiPen. I couldn't open it and Susan took it off me. I pointed to where she should administer it and instead of doing that, she asked me if I was sure about not breaking up with Fiance. Uncle arrived, saw what was happening, called Fiance into the room and between them, they got my EpiPen, administered it and drove me to A&D. To this day, Susan insists that no one is allergic to pepper. I'm just fussy, and even though I should have pressed charges at the time, not only was she still my lecturer, but law enforcement says that being stupid isn't a crime. And another one I wanted to point out is what's the security situation to your new place? We have and are in the process of installing one of those doorbells with video feed and CCTV. We replaced the short screws in the door with longer ones. Our place has a high metal fence and we're looking into a keypad or something similar so that we'd have a code on it. 
our new hospital has had some issues with the maternity ward in the last couple of years, so they upped security in a big way. And now all visitors have to wear passes and sign in with photo ID. And they have a system where once a person signing in puts in their name, they type it into a computer and the computer will alert them if this person is banned, like Susan is. And in that case, she will not get her visitor pass and therefore will not be able to access the ward. Just imagine that, your mother being so crazy that these are the measures you have to go to just to avoid her. And I mean, if all parents were like this, I feel like humanity would just be straight up doomed. Alright guys, that's it from me. This was r slash pro revenge. I hope you enjoyed this subreddit and if you did, make sure to go down into the comments below and tell me your own stories. I would love to hear them. Also, if you're new to the channel, make sure to go down and subscribe for Reddit videos every second day on a bunch of different subreddits. But for now, that's it from me. I hope you enjoyed and all I want to do is see you all here next time. See you later, guys.